a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Windmill A windmill is a mill that converts the energy of wind into rotational energy by means of veins called sails or blades. Centuries ago, windmills usually were used to mill grain, pump water, or both. The majority of modern windmills take the form of wind turbines used to generate electricity, or wind pumps used to pump water, either for land drainage or to extract groundwater. Windmills in Antiquity The wind wheel of the Greek engineer Heron of Alexandria in the first century is the earliest known instance of using a wind-driven wheel to power a machine. Another early example of the wind-driven wheel was the prayer wheel, which has been used in Tibet and China since the 4th century. It has been claimed that the Babylonian emperor Hammurabi planned to use wind power for his ambitious irrigation project in the 17th century BCE. Horizontal Windmills The first practical windmills had sails that rotated in horizontal plane around a vertical axis, according to Ahmed Y. Al-Hassan. These Panemani windmills were invented in eastern Persia as recorded by the Persian geographer Aristocrate in the 9th century. The authenticity of an earlier anecdote of a windmill involving the second caliph Umar is questioned on the grounds that it appears in a 10th century document. Made of 6 to 12 sails covered in reed matting or cloth material, these windmills were used to grind grain or draw up water and were quite different from the later European vertical windmills. Windmills were in widespread use across the Middle East and Central Asia, and later spread to China and India from there. A similar type of horizontal windmill with rectangular blades, used for irrigation, can also be found in 13th century China, introduced by the travels of Yeluchukai to Turkestan in 1219. Horizontal windmills were built, in small numbers, in Europe during the 18th and 19th centuries, for example Fowler's Mill at Battersea in London, and Hooper's Mill at Margate in Kent. These early modern examples seem not to have been directly influenced by the horizontal windmills of the Middle and Far East, but to have been independent inventions by engineers influenced by the Industrial Revolution. Vertical Windmills Due to a lack of evidence, debate occurs among historians as to whether or not Middle East and horizontal windmills triggered the original development of European windmills. In Northwestern Europe, the horizontal axis or vertical windmill is believed to date from the last quarter of the 12th century in the Triangle of Northern France, Eastern England, and Flanders. The earliest certain reference to a windmill in Europe dates from 1185, in the former village of Weedley in Yorkshire which was located at the southern tip of the world overlooking the Humber estuary. A number of earlier, but less certainly dated, 12th century European sources referring to windmills have also been found. These earliest mills were used to grind cereals. Post Mill The evidence at present is that the earliest type of European windmill was the post mill, so named, because of the large upright post on which the mill's main structure is balanced. By mounting the body this way, the mill is able to rotate to face the wind direction. An essential requirement for windmills to operate economically in northwestern Europe, where wind directions are variable. The body contains all the milling machinery. The first post mills were of the sunken type, where the post was buried in an earth mound to support it. Later, a wooden support was developed called the trestle. This was often covered over or surrounded by a roundhouse to protect the trestle from the weather and to provide storage space. This type of windmill was the most common in Europe until the 19th century, when more powerful tower and smock mills replaced them. Hollow Post Mill In a hollow post mill, the post on which the body is mounted is hollowed out to accommodate the drive shaft. This makes it possible to drive machinery below or outside the body while still being able to rotate the body into the wind. Hollow post mills driving scoop wheels were used in the Netherlands to drain wetlands from the 14th century onwards. Tower Mill By the end of the 13th century, the masonry tower mill, on which only the cap is rotated rather than the whole body of the mill, had been introduced. The spread of tower mills came with a growing economy that called for larger and more stable sources of power, though they were more expensive to build. In contrast to the post mill, only the cap of the tower mill needs to be turned into the wind, 
so the main structure can be made much taller, allowing the sails to be made longer, which enables them to provide useful work even in low winds. The cap can be turned into the wind either by winches or gearing inside the cap or from a winch on the tail pole outside the mill. A method of keeping the cap and sails into the wind automatically is by using a fantail, a small windmill mounted at right angles to the sails, at the rear of the windmill. These are also fitted to tail poles of post mills and are common in Great Britain and English-speaking countries of the former British Empire, Denmark, and Germany, but rare in other places. Around some parts of the Mediterranean Sea, tower mills with fixed caps were built, because the wind's direction varied little most of the time. Smock Mill The smock mill is a later development of the tower mill, where the tower is replaced by a wooden framework, called the smock. The smock is commonly of octagonal plan, though examples with more, or fewer, sides exist. The smock is thatched, boarded or covered by other materials, such as slate, sheet metal, or tar paper. The lighter construction in comparison to tower mills makes smock mills practical as drainage mills as these often had to be built in areas with unstable subsoil. Having originated as a drainage mill, smock mills are also used for a variety of purposes. When used in a built-up area it is often placed on a masonry base to raise it above the surrounding buildings. Sails Common sails consist of a lattice framework on which a sailcloth is spread. The miller can adjust the amount of cloth spread according to the amount of wind available and power needed. In medieval mills, the sailcloth was wound in and out of a ladder-type arrangement of sails. Post-medieval mill sails had a lattice framework over which the sailcloth was spread, while in colder climates, the cloth was replaced by wooden slats, which were easier to handle in freezing conditions. The jib sail is commonly found in Mediterranean countries, and consists of a simple triangle of cloth wound round a spar. In all cases, the mill needs to be stopped to adjust the sails. Inventions in Great Britain in the late 18th and 19th centuries led to sails that automatically adjust to the wind speed without the need for the miller to intervene, culminating in patent sails invented by William Cubitt in 1807. In these sails, the cloth is replaced by a mechanism of connected shutters. In France, Pierre Théophile Burton invented a system consisting of longitudinal wooden slats connected by a mechanism that lets the miller open them while the mill is turning. In the 20th century, increased knowledge of aerodynamics from the development of the airplane led to further improvements in efficiency by German engineer Below and several Dutch millwrights. The majority of windmills have four sails. Multiple sailed mills, with five, six or eight sails, were built in Great Britain, Germany and less commonly elsewhere. Earlier multiple sailed mills are found in Spain, Portugal, Greece, parts of Romania, Bulgaria, and Russia. A mill with an even number of sails has the advantage of being able to run with a damaged sail, and the one opposite removed without resulting in an unbalanced mill. In the Netherlands the stationary position of the sails, i.e., when the mill is not working, has long been used to give signals. A slight tilt of the sails before the main building signals joy, while a tilt after the building signals morning. Across the Netherlands, windmills were placed in morning position in honor of the Dutch victims of the 2014 Malaysian Airlines Flight 17 shootdown. Machinery Gears inside a windmill convey power from the rotary motion of the sails to a mechanical device. The sails are carried on a horizontal windshaft. Windshafts can be wholly made of wood or wood with a cast iron pole end, or entirely of cast iron. The brake wheel is fitted onto the windshaft between the front and rear bearing. It has the brake around the outside of the rim, and teeth in the side of the rim which drive the horizontal gear wheel called wallower on the top end of the vertical upright shaft. In grist mills, the great spur wheel, lower down the upright shaft, drives one or more stone nuts on the shafts driving each millstone. Post mills sometimes have a head and or tail wheel driving the stone nuts directly, instead of the spur gear arrangement. Additional gear wheels drive a sack hoist or other machinery. The machinery differs if the windmill is used for other applications than milling grain. A drainage mill uses another set of gear wheels on the bottom end of the upright shaft to drive a scoop wheel, or Archimedes screw. Sawmills use a crankshaft to provide a reciprocating motion to the saws. 
Windmills have been used to power many other industrial processes, including paper mills, threshing mills, and to process oil seeds, wool, paints and stone products. Spread and decline In the 14th century windmills became popular in Europe. The total number of wind-powered mills is estimated to have been around 200,000 at its peak in 1850, which is modest compared to some 500,000 water wheels. Windmills were applied in regions where there was too little water, where rivers freeze in winter and in flat lands where the flow of the river was too slow to provide the required power. With the coming of the Industrial Revolution, the importance of wind and water as primary industrial energy sources declined, and were eventually replaced by steam and internal combustion engines, although windmills continued to be built in large numbers until late in the 19th century. More recently, windmills have been preserved for their historic value, in some cases as static exhibits when the antique machinery is too fragile to put in motion, and in other cases as fully working mills. Of the 10,000 windmills in use in the Netherlands around 1850, about 1,000 are still standing. Most of these are being run by volunteers, though some grist mills are still operating commercially. Many of the drainage mills have been appointed as backup to the modern pumping stations. The Zoon district has been said to have been the first industrialized region of the world with around 600 operating wind-powered industries by the end of the 18th century. Economic fluctuations and the Industrial Revolution had a much greater impact on these industries than on grain and drainage mills, so only very few are left. Construction of mills spread to the Cape Colony in the 17th century. The early tower mills did not survive the gales of the Cape Peninsula, so in 1717, the here and 17 sent carpenters, masons, and materials to construct a durable mill. The mill, completed in 1718, became known as the Oud Molen and was located between Pinelands Station and the Black River. Long since demolished, its name lives on as that of a technical school in Pinelands. By 1863, Cape Town could boast 11 mills stretching from Pardon Island to Mowbray. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?